Um, but it's a Friday, and of course, uh, transport very key as far as uh, your movement is concerned. And we're talking about uh, the bus rapid transit system. You might have seen the pilot in the city of Accra, Amasaman, uh, through to Tudu. And I'm sure you might have joined, and uh, uh, hopefully, in a few months, uh, the system will be in operation and you will have a smooth ride or drive from wherever you are to your offices. We're told of the extension to other parts of the city of Accra and then perhaps to some other cities. This morning, my guest will help us understand this whole project, how it is intended to improve the transport system and uh, uh, get workers to the offices and wherever they're going safe and sound. He's the chief executive of the Greater Accra Passenger Transport, uh, Samson Jamra. Good morning. Good morning. Mm, and I hope you're doing great. I am. Let's start from here. Now, this project uh, started some years ago. What we're seeing now is uh, the pilot. Now, how excited are we that at least uh, after all the, the hurdles, we are at the piloting stage? Yes, a lot of effort has gone into this arrangement. Mm. Let us start from the beginning. Right. The government realized the challenges with mobility in our major cities. A journey that normally would have taken 20 minutes, increasingly is taking about two and a half hours, etc., with its uh, associated discomfort and other issues. Mm. So the government realized that if nothing is done about it, we we'll eventually get into a situation where Accra does, is not livable anymore. Right. We we'll have a great lock with lots of traffic jams all over the place. So what was the solution? I mean, things have been tried and tested in the past. I always give the Tetequashi runabout as an example. The solution that easily comes to mind is expanding the road space. Tetequashi runabout 10 years ago was congested. The inter interchange was put over there mm. and it's still congested. So expanding the road space alone is not the issue. The issue really is combining the expansion of the road space with, again, the management of the road space. What do we mean by the management of the road space? If you take your typical traffic snapshot, you find that there are a lot of individual vehicles in the road space locked up in congestion. You do not see a lot of these high occupancy vehicles in the road space. Private vehicles. Private vehicles. One or two passengers. In One or two passengers in the private vehicles as a majority of the vehicles that you see in the road space. And that is not good management of the road space because a high occupancy vehicle, like one of the buses that we use, mm. has the crash capacity of 40 persons sitting and 46 persons standing. That's about 86. That is 86 persons. Now, if you compare the equivalent of cars that it will displace in the road space, you are going to have 40, approximately 40 cars taken away by the use of these high occupancy vehicles. So the way to go is really have a transport system that combines these high occupancy vehicles with priority arrangements on the corridor such that the transport system actually makes your journey times shorter. And eventually, we will encourage people to leave their vehicles at home and patronize the public transport arrangement hmm. once it has the quality that the people are looking out for. And that is a long-term solution to the congestion that we are facing the road you raise the issue of qual quality, so then it suggests that uh, I, I am in my jacket with my tie and I, I am comfortable in that bus compared to if I had been in a trotter or any other commercial car. That's what you're talking about. I'm talking about the kind of tra public transport arrangements that will give you the same or as close to the kind of comfort that an uh, average person is looking out for. The trotters have played their role in our public transport space. Mm. They have done that, but they are constrained by certain issues in their service delivery. That does not give the quality that the average person is looking out for. So the average person, when he has the means, tries to get his own car. And that is what we want to deter. For example, in cities like Hong Kong and those things, you would not want to invest in your own car. Because it's expensive. And the public transport system works. It's cheaper. So that is the kind of situation that we want to have within our major cities. You, you talked about uh, the uh, high occupancy buses. Perhaps that is why uh, the commercial drivers, uh, the total drivers, the taxi drivers, particularly the total drivers, 
are worried about the fact that uh, they might lose out in uh, the competition for passengers. It, 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 should, should we be worried about that? We shouldn't because government's policy has been clearly crafted. There's a role to be played by each of the individual actors within the space. Mm. For example, government has resolved that 80% of movement within our cities should be done by one means of mass transit as possible. So it's not only the road mass transit issues that we are talking about. The rail mass transit is also a solution to the issues that we are talking about. But in the medium, short to medium term, which one is easily implementable? Right. And then again, government's policy is that we are working with the existing operators within the public transport space to improve the system. So the GPRTU, the, the private uh, protoire and all the others? They are all they part, are all part, part of, of the process. what we are seeing now. They are part of the deliberations that has brought us to this point, and they are part of the delivery that we are producing now. Why, they, why then do they seem to be complaining? I don't know where the complaint is coming from, but we have a platform where we discuss issues, mm. and these issues are not really coming from the unions, the main unions. Will they be uh, indeed thrown out of the job? They won't, because the service delivery on the corridor, GAPTI represents the assemblies. We are the managers of the system. We do not provide the individual service operations on the corridor. That is being provided by the existing total unions mm. who have been, whose capacity have been built up to be able to enter into contracts with GAPTI and other institutions to be able to provide the bus services on the corridor. For example, there are three services that we are delivering mm. with this output. There's a service that starts from Amasaman, then ends at Tudu. This is being controlled by the cooperative union together with other smaller members in the GRTCC. And there's a service that starts from Achimota to Tudu. That is being handled by Protoa and other members of the GRTCC. Right. And then there's a service that starts from Ofanko to Tudu. That is being provided by the GPRTU company. So all of them are involved? They are involved in the service provisions. The drivers of these buses are trotter drivers whose capacities have been built up to be able to handle the equipment and also the kind of service delivery that we have designed on the system. I see. Now, let's now try to answer this question of if indeed uh, the system is being rushed. W w the, w this project was started some two, three years ago? The project was started in 2007. It started as the Ghana Urban Transport Project. Mm. And this was a project that was put together by the government of Ghana, the World Bank, the AFD, and the Global Environmental Facility. And the project was very comprehensive, looking at all the challenges that affects mobility from institutional, legal, the uh, business environment, etc. All of those things were looked at and strate strategies were developed to be able to resolve those challenges. I see. So for example, yes, for example, regulation of public transportation is a function of the government. And this has been devolved by the Local Government Act to the uh, MMDAs. So the MMDAs have the mandate to be able to regulate public transportation. However, at that time, their capacities was not adequate to be able to carry out that. Mm. So the project built up the capacities of the MMDAs in terms of setting up the bylaws, setting up institutions within the MMDAs focused on resolving public transport issues. And that is what has culminated in this pilot that we are demonstrating. Are you rushing the pilot? We are not rushing the pilot. It's been evolving in steps, different steps, getting the uh, trotter stakeholders to be part of the system, etc. took a lot of time in terms of um, talking and getting cooperation in the framework that we developed. Mm. If you're not rushing the pilot, the concerns that the buses are not registered, uh, the concerns that uh, they don't have insurance, perhaps the reason is that because you're rushing, these things have not been done. Is, is that indeed the case? That is not the case. That is not the case. All these things are being rolled in systematically. For example, we need 85 buses to be able to have a full complement of the services on the corridor. On these three routes? On these three routes. Mm. But we are facing in 38 buses in stages. So our first set of services will be carried out by 38 buses. And those 38 buses are immediate requirements. So those ones have all the full complements of the coverage, etc., etc. Mm. And we are testing the operational readiness 
of the driver crew and the back office operational support. Again, in this sense, you can do the classroom work, but you require real life simulation to test how they will respond to incidents on the road. On the road. So those were the things that we are attempting to do on Monday. It was more of an internal exercise, but simulating the real life situation as much as possible for us to have the opportunity to look at the challenges and address those challenges and get our guys ready for the real So in life. fact, these challenges were anticipated, were expected? They were expected, yes. And there were measures to deal with them? There were measures to deal with them in terms of bringing them back into the classroom mm. and reviewing the operational protocols. How do you respond when your equipment is not working mm. at that stop and there are people rushing to board, board the, the bus? Right. How do you get the communication back to the support staff? And what kind of response are you going to get back to resolve the situation? You don't have to panic. Those kind of things were things that we were looking at. Let's answer this too. The issue of a, a rapid system to one of a quality for a start so that we can transit to the, 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 the rapid system. You see, a bus rapid transit connotes an emulation of the rail transit system. First of all, if you look at the rail transit system, before you get onto the platform, you'd have bought your ticket, you'd have verified your ticket, and you come into an enclosed space mm. that allows you to board the train the moment the train docks. Right. The train has a schedule, and there are passenger information systems within the train system that announces the stops. And then again, it has a certain marketing and brand image associated with it. These are the details of a BRT that we're trying to emulate on the road space. But you see, a train has its own tracks. Hmm. There's and no that's, obstruction. There's that no is entrance. the connotation of a BRT. Right. So a BRT is supposed to have its own tracks on the road. So we should have dedicated lanes from origin to destination. And again, when you look at the system that we developed, we do not have dedicated lanes from Amasaman. It's a 22-kilometer stretch to Tudu. What we have are dedicated facilities from Achimota all the way to Tudu. Tudu. What I mean by this is not a full-blown BRT, is the fact that the philosophy here is resolving the challenges in terms of journey time at the junctions and intersections by engineering means favoring the bus system. So when we take between Achimota and Kwame Nkrumah Circle, mm. we have what we call Q jumpers that are being developed from Kesano towards Abeka Junction. So it will allow the buses to pass in intersections. You know, when you have an intersection, mm. you have a red light, there's a tailback. Right. So the bus bypasses the tailback by using this dedicated, short dedicated facility, and it approaches the traffic lights. And there are transponders in the bus that communicates with the traffic lights. So at the junction, there's a green way for the bus to move before ordinary traffic is allowed to move. Mm. So it gives the bus priority. So those are the priority measures we are incorporating in the system. And the name Ayalolo was chosen simply because we are looking at moving forward and continuous development with the moving forward. All right. So basically, these are things that, and ours is a pilot, because we will be continuously looking at ways of enhancing the quality of the system, just so we meet the ultimate aim mm. of convincing people that this is the best way to go instead of using your private car. So for instance, the, the, the journey from Amasaman to, let's say, uh, uh, of Achimota will in future get that dedicated uh, line or lane to? Currently, what is in place mm. at time that we go commercial is that we have the Q jumpers developed where I've told you between Achimota, excuse me, between Achimota and then uh, Abeka Junction mm. on the approach to Tudu. And then from Tudu coming to Amasaman, there's also another set of Q jumpers that have been developed between Circle and towards Achimota. Then we have a dedicated lane on the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue. I always refer to the old Farisco because right. I'm an old man with my gray hair. <laughs> right. The old Farisco traffic lights. Mm. And that is a dedicated facility that bypasses all the traffic buildup on the Kingsway stretch. And that takes us straight to Tudu. And that no other vehicle is expected no to drive in that. No other vehicle is expected. In fact, mm. it's actually been... You see it written BRT alone. It has been deliberately designed as a contra flow. So it comes against traffic. Right. So if you get into the lane, you'll be facing the buses as mm -hmm. they come in towards you, which is not a situation that you want to be mm -hmm. involved in. So that actually saves us about eight minutes in terms of journey time on that stretch. So cumulatively, 
the dedicated facilities we have on the corridor is about 13 to 15 percent mm. of the entire corridor stretch. Okay. But your ideal BRT should have been 100 percent or close to 100 percent. And that's what you're, you're working at achieving. That is why we want to. You see, in the in London, for example, the property space doesn't allow you to be able to have dedicated lanes throughout the system. But they've been very clever in designing ways of giving the bus priorities. So that is the kind of approach that we want to adopt. Mm -hmm. So as and where it is necessary, and we feel we have the congestion, we get our engineers to assist us mm. to design priorities for the bus system. So this is a continuous development that we are putting in place. Mm. Mr. Jamal, let's wrap up. So the, the piloting stages and then? What we are doing is the training stages okay. for our operational readiness, right. ready for commercial operations. Because again, the whole issue of sustainability is one of the issues that is at stake here. Government's policies are government to provide the infrastructure and the operating environment for private sector to participate. To come in. So the operational... When you say that it means private sectors will bring in the buses or what? Private sectors are supposed to run the bus the services. The buses, okay. So basically the operational costs should be sustainable in terms of the fare box. And that is one of the issues of piloting that we are putting across. Again, we are also demonstrating a new business model for our trotter operators. Because once they are organized into entities, they can also participate, like the unions have done with this, mm. in other developments along the network. I'm sure there's more to talk about. Mr. Uh, Samson Jamra is the Chief Executive of the Greater Accra Passenger Transport Executive. Mr. Jamra, grateful for your time. There's more to talk about this, but uh, we've run out of time. I'm sure whilst we move on with the project, we'll have you more to, to tell us what's happening. And part of the Ayalulu slogan is that when you say Ayalulu, you say Wati. What a, okay. I'm grateful, Mr. Jamal, for your time this morning. Let's take a quick break. That is more on New Day.